Nicola, buddy, you're looking a bit green. Welcome back, my fellow duplicants to Oxygen Not Included. Today, I've got an awesome preview build to share with you today. It is the Nuclear Upgrade, or shall we say Nuclear Upgrade Part 1. All right, so this upgrade contains about three different primary things. First and foremost, we have an atomic level research. So inside of here, we'll see that the research tree now contains uh, an, a third tier for stuff. The second thing is we now have the ability to mine up uranium ore. So this allows us to get our hands on enriched uranium, which is really important because we now have nuclear power. Mmm, yes. However, with great power comes great danger because the final piece to our puzzle now is radiation, which is also the primary thing that we need in order to gain the particles and whatnot that allow us to do the research. So the whole thing's very circular. Now, if we read the update here, it looks like there's going to be multiple parts to this upgrade. So we're expecting the system to be realized over the next two updates. Uh, so what this makes me think is that there's going to be multiple phases to the whole radiation upgrade, uh, a bit like we've seen with the rockets in the past. So what we're going to see here isn't necessarily the full breadth of everything that's going to be in the sort of nuclear rollout of this thing. However, it does allow us to get our hands on parts of it and, and start to play with it. But you can also see that things like the B-finery here <laughs> are, are still not part of the game yet. So I might expect to see something like this be rolled out maybe in the next update or something. All right, so let's start with the uranium. Now, this is something that you can find on a planet once you've kind of gotten to the point where you can actually take a rocket and then go and land on another planet. So it's a little bit past mid-game when you're first starting off into your whole rocket adventure. So, But once you're there, you do have access to uranium ore. However, this requires a new skill. So Meep over here is going to go ahead and... Make sure you have exosuit training because a lead suit means that your dupe's going to be super slow. So the other skill we're going to need here is super hard digging. That allows us to actually dig up the ore. However, if we need to kind of get ourselves out of a real jam here, you'll have to go all the way up to hazmat digging here. That allows us to dig up corium, which is something that hopefully you won't need to dig up. All right, Meep, now that you have those awesome skills, go ahead and jump in your lead suit, which is part of the lead suit dock so this requires a little bit of power and it requires oxygen just like every other suit and you can make that right on over here like this which just takes a little bit of lead and glass so you can see here that uranium ore takes super hard digging so it's a lot like digging up the i think diamond and whatnot all right so now we have a little bit of uranium ore on the ground right now and i don't think this is fully implemented just yet uh, because this isn't giving off any sort of radiation however there are some other areas where there is radiation that is just kind of naturally uh, finding its way into the base here so that would be up here in space you get a little bit of natural radiation coming in from from up here and you can see something very interesting about radiation and that is that it will penetrate through materials and matter of fact if we look at the different types of block tiles here it'll actually penetrate through different materials at different rates. So you can see right up here, we have 24 rads per cycle. And then as we move through different things like windows or diamond and whatnot, uh, that actually cuts it down by a little bit. And if you're to stack up more and more of these on top of each other, that will then decrease that just a little bit more. So you can see how all of these different blocks kind of play out. It's definitely something we're going to have to keep in mind because we will have to do a little bit of shielding <laughs> in order to not irradiate our base. But as I mentioned before, I don't think it's fully implemented just yet because we're not seeing any sort of radiation from the environment here. And there is one thing that isn't um, showing up and that seems to be radiation from contacting different materials, a bit like food poisoning. Because there is a piece of equipment here called the decontamination shower. And this uses water to remove germs and radiation. But I noticed that if I look at radiation here, there's just nothing you know, I'm not gaining any sort of contact radiation. Okay, so now that I dug up that uranium ore, you can see that Meep's going to pick it up. And here's where I would kind of expect those germs or whatever, basically the radiation, to be on Meep. But um, I don't think that's currently implemented yet, so I don't think we're going to see him use the shower thing. But anyhow, you can see that he's going to run on over here and put this in the central fuge. So this is a new piece of equipment, obviously. Uses 480 watts. And its one and only purpose is to turn uranium ore into enriched uranium. And then after we produce that enriched uranium, you can see that Meep here is going to then take that and put it inside of our reactor. Now, once inside of the reactor here, what this is essentially doing is it's 
using up a little bit of that enriched uranium in order to heat up a container of water inside of this reactor. So there's a, a certain amount of water that's inside of here that is then increasing to about 400 degrees Celsius. And then at that point, it then vents out of this and, and fills our room here with steam which happens to be at 400 degrees Celsius. So there's some interesting things that we might be able to do automation wise in order to kind of work with the reactor here. And you can also kind of change the amount of mass. Right now I'm only using one kilogram of enriched uranium. However, I can increase that to produce more and more steam. However, one byproduct of our centrifuge here is that we are going to generate a little bit of uranium in the form of liquid. So you can see that this will pop out here pretty soon. So just like that, we get a little bit of enriched uranium. And then right here at 186 degrees Celsius, we have eight kilograms of just liquid uranium. So that's quite interesting. When we start to look at the different materials here, we have uranium ore, which can turn into uranium at 132 degrees Celsius. At that point, you can go all the way up to rock gas at 4,000 degrees Celsius, or we can cool that back down to depleted uranium at 132 degrees Celsius. So we're going to have to watch the temperature around uranium ore because if it turns liquid on us, then it's only going to end up, then it will end up eventually cooling into depleted uranium, which isn't going to do us any good. That is unless it's very radioactive. At that point, we might be able to use the particle generators, which kind of brings this whole thing full circle. So what this is, is a new type of equipment called the HEP, so high energy particles. Essentially what we're trying to do here is absorb radiation into these little like particle generators. And what you can see here is that once we reach a certain threshold, you can then shoot these particles in many different directions. So you can see here, we're building up high energy particles. And once we get this to 50, we'll see that this will shoot off here to the direction of left, just like that. So that right there is high energy particles. And then that is then going to go to a particle redirector. So that's the other piece of equipment here, which will absorb that particle and then shoot it off into yet another direction, which can then be shot out again and again until you get to the atomic collider. So you gotta really kind of figure out what your path is going to be and how you can uh, allow radiation to get to your collectors in order to move those particles to where they need to go so that you can run your atomic collider. All right, so now that I have some particles inside of the atomic collider, let's go ahead and do a little bit of research. For that, I'm going to need a new tier of scientists, the atomic research. So meep, head on over there. Matter of fact, you might even have a whole new hat. Oh, you do, nice. There we go, meep is now on his way. All right, here you go, meep. <laughs> Just pushes a bunch of buttons. All right, meep, what I wanna know is how many particles does it take to make one atomic research? Oh, there we go, that was one. Okay, so it looks like there's about 10 high energy particles needed for one atomic research. So if we take a look at some of these higher end research ones here, that looks like 400 particles needed in order to make something like the hydrocarbon propulsion. Or if we go really high end here and we look at the hydrogen engine and the new liquid oxygen tank, that looks to be about 3000 particles needed. So there we are, now we're out of high energy particles. So we need more of those. One of the things I noticed over here is that the reactor does give off nuclear waste and that right there has radioactive contaminants inside of it. So maybe that's what my dupes can splash through and actually get on top of. Yeah, see, there we have it, nuclear contaminants. Hmm. Yeah, I could see how it would be kind of hard to clean yourself off <laughs> if the water you're using to clean yourself is contaminated. No wonder you get stuck there, me. That actually makes a lot of sense. All right, let's not put a bunch of radioactive contaminants in the water and, and try that. All right, head on over here and enrich some uranium for me, Meep. Yes, and then splash around inside of this puddle a little bit. All right, no, 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 a little bit more. There you go, what do you have on top of you now? All right, what if you come on over here and mop that up? How about that? Meep, Meep. There you go. Germless dupe. Oh, but there's radioactive contaminants floating around now. Oh, interesting. And one of the things I've noticed here about these particles that actually go flying around is that they can actually hurt your duplicates and stuff. So, me, hey, come on over here and take one for the team, huh? Oh, man! Me! Oh! Oh, jeez! <laughs> Mima, help me out. 
I, I know, I know. Radioactive contaminants. Not good stuff. <laughs> He's like, I'm dying, but I gotta go to the bathroom. Help. Well, this is gonna be interesting. What happens when you go through the decontamination shower? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Beep! Your head's stuck in the roller, dude. Mima! Meep's dying, dude. Help him. There you go. Ah, <laughs> oh, all right. So stuck on the cot, but then still, still not actually healing. All right. Come on, Mima. Help him out. Ah, <laughs> okay. Not everything is working as intended. Mima, Mima. What are you doing to me? Oh, jeez. Well, that brings me to my final point here. Radiation sickness. So if we take a look at Mima here and look at her properties, you can see a whole lot of different stats about her. And one of the things that we can see now is radiation absorption. And here you can see something that's quite interesting. Duplicants will basically get rid of 100 rads per cycle. So there's kind of an exposure thing that happens to your duplicants. And if you expose them to enough radiation for a long enough amount of time, it will build up inside of them. Let me show you how that works. Come on over here, Mima, and uh, disable the lead suit checkpoint, will you? All right, so here's a good example. Mima's come down here to decide to play around with a little bit of uranium without a suit on. Doesn't necessarily seem like the, the best idea. Not only is it kind of hot, but yeah, <laughs> good amount of radiation down there too. And you can see that the amount of radiation inside of Mima is going up. However, it's not going up very quickly. This is something that happens kind of slow and over a decent amount of time right now. It's something that I think will be balanced out um, as they continue to kind of roll it out and figure out what all is going to happen, at least with the radiation sickness. But however, for science, let's go ahead and consistently irradiate. All right, I need another duplicate. Nicola. Hey, Nicolo, how about you come on up here into this fun little chamber and show everybody what radiation sickness looks like. All right, so inside of here, you can see that we currently have zero radiation. However, there are some different things inside of the game that do give off radiation. Like we said, we get some up here in space, but you also get a little bit of a radiation off of shine bugs. Mmm, yes. So if we bring in a shine bug here, you can see that we are now going to give off a little bit of radiation down here. Not a whole lot though. Right now we're only getting about six rads per cycle, which is mostly safe. And since we know how much our duplicates can actually kind of get rid of over time, it's not a big deal. <clears throat> no, you don't get to go that way. Nicola, come back. However, as we bring in more and more shine bugs here, we're going to increase the amount of radiation that they're giving off. <laughs> yes. So now we're up to 210 rads per cycle. So that is considered a significant hazard. And we're going beyond what our duplicate can actually absorb here, so the radiation balance is increasing. How do you feel, Nicola? Pretty good? Oh! Mima, you want to join him? <laughs> so we can see here that the current exposure is 140 per cycle, and rejuvenation is set at negative 100. So let's go ahead and crank this up just a little bit. Spawn in a bunch more shine bugs. All right. That's a fair bit more. Now he's absorbing a nice 496 per cycle. All right, so Nicola has now gone over 100 and has minor radiation sickness. So at this point, Nicola, buddy, you're looking a bit green. <laughs> now, in order to get rid of something like that, you should be able to just kind of eat her basic radiation pill. So this will increase the rate at which he can kind of get rid of and that stuff inside of him <laughs> just kind of shakes as he's trying to eat it. Oh, no, don't, no, don't vomit. Oh, oh, all over, all over the basic rad pill. You didn't even eat it, dude. All right, so we can see that just after a little bit of sleep there, Nicola's no longer sick, so that was actually not that bad. Oh, there you go. Now he ate the rad pill. So now he has minus 200 per cycle, so that's going down even faster now. That's not good enough, Nicola. Come on back up here. Feel the radiation. Yeah! All right, so we can see that minor radiation sickness. Like I said, it happens at 100. Stamina is minus 25 per cycle. Bathroom use speed is minus 30. And you get vomiting, which is real nice. Although it doesn't seem to be contaminated, so it's kind of disappointing. I would think that that would actually be vomiting. <laughs> 
All right, so we're coming up on 300 rads. We're now into major radiation sickness. So athletics minus four, stamina minus 50%, and still the minus 30% to the bathroom use speed. <laughs> and if we let Nicola run around, well, you can see that he now looks a little bit worse than he was before. But you're not done yet, Nicola. So we do have another piece of medicine here. This is the intermediate rad pill with no database entry, so I'm not 100% sure how that's gonna work out. Plus, my colony seems to not have advanced medical care on this planet. What do you need to know, Mima? He told me that you had an advanced medical care degree. Were you lying? Oh no, see, now it knows. Oh, but what happens if he runs through the decontamination thing, hmm? Is it gonna work, Nicola? Are you gonna be able to scrub yourself free? Matter of fact, I think you might just get stuck in there at the moment. Forever and ever, feeling very sick <laughs> and cold. <laughs> There you go. Come on, Nicola. Come on. Be free, Nicola. All right. Nicola. Go to the go to a doctor thing or something. There you go. So you put in the rad advanced rad thing inside of the disease clinic. Hmm? 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 Now, now get yourself in there, but radiation absorption minus 400 rads per cycle. Well, you know what, Nicola? I guess you need a little bit more radiation. You're not quite desperate enough, aren't you? Coming up on 600 rads. Now you have extreme radiation sickness. How does that feel, Nicola? So that's minus six to athletics, minus 75 to stamina, and still reduced bathroom speed. And as you can imagine, it looks even worse. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Nicola, bud, I know you want to head over here. Yeah, there you go. No. <laughs> I guess you're just not sick enough, are you? Well, in that case, how about you head on back up there? 700, still climbing. Now keep in mind, I mean, this is like a boatload of <laughs> 1,000 rads per cycle right there, as compared to what we have down here, right next to the nuclear reactor, which is still 500 rads. Uh, so, you know, while it may seem like this dupe is getting absolutely obliterated, um, I think it's kind of an extreme situation. But then again, I think this is something that's going to be balanced out a little bit more as we kind of test it out and see where things end up. 800? On a scale of 1 to 10, how miserable do you feel? I'm gonna take that as a 10. Coming up on 900? Oh! <laughs> Incapacitated. Nicola is now fully irradiated. So, where, where are you gonna end up now? So, Nicola's automatically been assigned to the cot. I think you should be in the disease clinic, man. <laughs> Party level nine. But let's see what Mima does. So far, she's been quite terrible at this. You did it again, Mima! <laughs> oh yeah, We're working as intended. <laughs> hey, Mima, one last thing before we're done here. Come on down here to the nuclear reactor. Now, if history has taught us anything, one thing that nuclear reactors definitely don't like to run without is coolant. So inside of here, we have a lot of water, but I've cut off the water supply. So we can see here that the temperature, hmm, hmm, it's going up quickly. Oh no, Mima! Uh-oh. Oh! Uh -oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's super explodey! <laughs> so while I've seen this before, I feel like they made it even more explodey. And here's the big kicker now. Oh, the radiation! <laughs> Nuclear waste has just been thrown everywhere. And we also have Corium. Hmm. Which has one million radioactive contaminants inside of it. Very nice. Oh. Which means, poor Mima down here now has major radiation sickness. Your lead suit, I think that little buffer down there went to zero and now you no longer have any protection. Well, before you can leave here, let's try to dig up some of that corium. Here, have a new skill. Let's go ahead and dig that up. Wow, that was fast. Here, come on over here and give this one a, a try as well. Come on, Mima, you got it. No, high priority. Cancel. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow, okay, that was fast. Anyhow, there's a lot of radiation over there. Oh, and there we have it. We now have nuclear waste inside these little containers. Neat. So if we have nuclear waste right here, is it still radioactive? No, it's completely safe. See, wouldn't you want to have one of these? We could put it on a little pedestal for decoration or something. <laughs> oh, geez, that's you without the lead suit. You're so slow, Mima. <laughs> here, have some basic chewies. You'll be fine, Mima. Ah, oh, yeah. She'll shrug it off, no problem. Well, at any rate, there you have it. I think it's definitely still kind of a work in progress. We're going to see it evolve here over the next couple of updates, balance some things out. But as you can see here, we definitely now have a use for the uranium ore in order to be processed into enriched uranium, which runs through the reactor, which gives off the radiation, allowing us to do things like the atomic collider research. However, there are other ways to kind of get to that research level as well by looking to different critters or even looking to space although it is quite a bit slower i think it's a pretty neat upgrade something i've been waiting for for a long time and i'm really looking forward to starting to work with the reactor and kind of dig into the details there and how do we optimize different things like that that's probably what i'm going to be looking at here over the next couple of weeks until this is a little bit more mature and kind of ready for an actual playthrough but at any rate that's all i got time for today hope the guys have enjoyed this little episode here of oxygen not included stay awesome guys peace brothgar out.